Hey guys, today we're going to talk about pre-tripping and taking care of a reefer unit. If you uh, went to driving school, you should have learned how to pre-trip the trailer itself, but uh, probably didn't get taught anything about the unit itself. And there's not enough uh, training out there on this issue. The bigger companies don't really provide the training that they should. They just say, well, don't worry about it. There's sensors in there uh, that'll tell you if you're low on oil or whatever. And a lot of them even control the temperatures from the office. So this is uh, good stuff to learn. You should know uh, if you're a company driver and say, oh, well, I don't care. Well, someday you might want to own your own trailer. And what a better time to learn than on somebody else's dime. So we go over a few things today and show you how what some things to look for on the reefer unit to keep it in good working condition and then how to uh, run a pre-trip on the unit when we're done. The reefer unit we're going to be looking at today is a Carrier 7300X4. Um, there are some differences between the Carrier and the Thermo King, but the concept is the same. So we'll uh, identify some uh, some components in here to take a look at. Make sure the unit is off so you're sticking your fingers in there. You don't want the unit to kick on and, and take your fingers off. All right, let's check. start by checking inside the, uh, the driver's side, side door here. And what we can get a good look at in here is the alternator right there. We can check for corrosion um, around the connections. So what we're looking for on that is tension. That's pretty good right there and make sure the belt isn't cracked, worn, signs of aging. All right up here we got the water pump, checking for leaks on the water pump, see if there's any coolant. And then this hose right here, we got a coolant line there. So we're checking for coolant leaks, any kind of leaks really. Um, looking down in the bottom there, everything's nice and dry, is what we're looking for. And uh, any wiring we can get an eye on, we're looking for too, see if there's any wiring rubbing anywhere. But then if you look way up in the top up there, you can see right up there is our coolant tank. Uh, we got red coolant in here, so we're looking good there. Uh, exhaust pipe, it's in good shape. So, I'm happy with the way everything looks on this side here. Let's uh, close this up here. One thing about these reefer units, these doors are crazy expensive, so anytime you're in one, just make sure the doggone thing latches good and tight. Uh, they're expensive to replace. Okay, now before we get into the center section here, let's check the passenger side. What's in this passenger side over here? We got a battery here. Um, this is really good shape here. We don't have a whole ton of corrosion around the uh, around the connections, so that's good. And uh, I like an AGM battery in these reefer units. They take the extremes so much better. Reefer units do a lot of sitting in the cold and different climates. So I like to spend the extra money on an AGM given the choice. Make sure the connections are tight here. Um, we got some more wiring here, kind of looking at. Sorry, it's hard to do this so I don't uh, fall off the edge. Uh, you got some uh, lines up in here that run refrigerant through them. So we're looking for anything wet that shouldn't be wet, okay? Um, and then just take a peek up in there also for anything leaking or wet all the way up into the top there. All right, now we're in the center section here. This is where most of the action is gonna take place. Here's where you check the oil. You should be checking the oil, like, it's about every day, really, as much as you check the truck oil. Um, anytime it's, the reefer's off here. Oil filter, make sure it's not leaking. Check for any oil leaking under here. We wanna make sure everything in here is dry. Uh, more exhaust here, and over here, you got your fuel filter, spin on, and then we got three belts in here total. We got this belt that runs up to the upper unit here. These are all brand new belts, they're looking real nice. We got uh, this belt here, it's a, a drive belt. Belt's looking, looking pretty good there, no cracks or nothing. And then once again over here, we looked at that alternator belt already. One big thing to look for, especially on these carrier units, this one thing alone here can be a, a big save to you, okay? It can save a load. If you look down in here, okay, over here you got your you got your compressor unit. Over here you got your engine unit, okay? The two are connected by a drive coupler. So if you look down in there, 
see that blue thing right there that's a nylon coupler that that helps connect the two and in the middle there you can see some teeth so there's this gear with teeth that sticks into that nylon coupler and over time these will all fail eventually um, I've had them fail at 10,000 hours I've had them fail at 15,000 hours so what you want to look for is any signs that there's some wear going on in there and sometimes what you'll see is down here in the bottom you'll see some blue flakes where that nylon is starting to kind of get stripped out or um, you may see uh, different signs of wear in there it's hard it's dark here it's hard for me to to point that out but I don't see I don't see any any wear anything abnormal going on in there um, which is good um, and then here okay so you got your compressor over here you got a little sight glass here where when this thing's running you should see oil bouncing around in there uh, if you're low on oil you're gonna have to take it somewhere have them put some oil in it's a special compressor oil uh, and then the compressor here you don't want to see any wetness or uh, if a compressor is starting to fail it'll it can blow oil it can blow oil against the back wall you can see oil on the door this is not oil this is uh, uh, water streaks from from where it runs down when it rains and stuff just the gunk and then um, also if there's a rear seal on these things it is it's not uncommon for them to leak so what you'll see is you'll start to see something dripping down in the bottom there it'll start to be and, and it can be like oily here's your air filter right here you can check that uh, this one's zip tied on because the, the clamps broke here uh, these lines here okay they're, uh, <clears throat> These lines here, vibrosorber lines, okay? These are an important component. These can, can fit, things can fail. They're, they're meant to take vibration here, and um, it's not uncommon in the summertime in the heat for them to build up condensation on them. So wet with water isn't a big deal, but you don't want to see any any oily type substance leaking through. Anything that look, can look like Freon that also could possibly be green. Not to really point out every single wire in here, but as you can see, you got wires running all over the place in here. Just give them the quick, you know, once, twice over, make sure nothing's rubbing. That can uh, cause you a problem later down the road. Right here you got your starter and solenoid. Look up in here to see that you don't have a ton of corrosion going on here on the connections, okay? You can clean that up. Here we got just a, I don't know if you can see, we got a little bit of green right there. I'll, uh, I'll clean that up one day here. And then in the upper unit here, we got our, our condenser. Um, on the carriers, this does not open. On the Thermo Kings, this will open. And you can look up in there, you're in, the care, in the Thermo Kings, your coolant tank is most likely way up in the center there. Um, of course, different Thermo King models are gonna be different. That's the thing too, Thermo King made a lot of different models and configurations. Uh, with these carriers, they can develop over time a tick in them, like an exhaust tick. Uh, what has to be done is the unit has to be pulled from the trailer and that's around the back side of the engine here uh, It's about I've replaced two of them got them done for about a thousand bucks. It's really not too bad um, You got different mounts here rubber mounts here for compressor uh, For engine you take a look at those everything in here. I'd say ha happens to look pretty good um, Really try to keep up on these things because it's cheaper than a freight claim. If you need to know how to prime a reefer, if you're running out of fuel, or if you gel up, I have a video on that that you might find helpful. Uh, occasionally, between services, I like to take this, uh, I call it a banjo bolt out here. It's got a little screen in there. Uh, it can plug up with gunk and cause it to run kind of poorly. Uh, this is a fuel line here. Uh, I like to clean those out. I run three, a little less than 3,000 hour intervals on the unit. I'll pull this apart about halfway, clean that little screen out. Once again, that's also in that video about if you run a reefer out of fuel, how to prime it. Now, let's go down and I'm going to show you how to run the, uh, the computer pre-trip on this thing. So, when that's done here, we're going to run a pre-trip with the, with the uh, electronics here itself. Let it fire up. Uh, you get to this menu a different way with the uh, carrier versus the Thermo King. 
So I got an alarm here. I know what it is. It's uh, it says no active alarms. I just exit. Uh, what it is with the carrier, a lot of times when you sit in a dock with your doors open at minus 10, the temperature gets out of range and it'll say box temp out of range. And then that code is stuck in there until the mechanic clears it, even though you know you got it back in with, with range. So we'll go to menu. And then right here, pre-trip. Push that button and then enter. Now the unit's gonna run. Well, it's not gonna run yet. It will uh, go through some checks here. I mean, it's gonna go through everything. It's gonna check the suction, the discharge pressures, your ambient temperatures. Your, um, it's gonna open and close the valves. Uh, it's gonna check the the voltage in the battery. When it starts up, it's gonna check the amperage draw. Uh, uh, what else? Uh, your different temperatures, RPMs. Um, what else? It's gonna pretty much check everything that like a, a computer can check. And at the end, it's gonna go through a checklist and it's gonna say pass, 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 pass. If it gets to a section that was no good, it's gonna say fail. And then you'll know to, uh, you need to get it into a shop. But uh, I know this is gonna pass because I just uh, just did it the other day. So the pre-trip is done. Here's the summary it's given us. Uh, start time to end time, that took uh, seven minutes, something like that, not quite. Uh, pre-trip completed, completed and passed. And here we can get the test results if we want to. And then we can scroll here, uh, display electrical current sensors, warm up, uh, checks your unloader valves, uh, low speed engine, high speed, uh, modulation valve, expansion valve, SW1 valve. So here you can see the extent of everything that it's checking and that's pretty cool. So yeah, we passed here and then we can just hit exit and the reefer will return to normal operation and we are good to go. If you like this kind of thing, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe, and check out the videos on the screen now for more uh, information just like this.